Oh, hey, Vedi. What are you thinking about? Oh, hi, teacher. I'm still wondering about elements and compounds. Oh, what about them? We have discussed how to balance some covalent and ionic compounds, so their total charge is zero or neutral. But I wonder, what if we don't know their charges? Well, in general, for groups 1, 2, and 3, the charges will be plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3, respectively. Well, for hmm. groups 5, 6, and 7, the charges will be minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1. This general rule is true most of the time. Most of the time? So, there would be exceptions? Of course there are. But you will learn about those at a higher level of chemistry. For now, we'll just use this general rule. I see. Got it. So, Fedi, do you still remember how to balance the charges to make neutral compounds? Of course. You can test me. Okay, so what is the formula of magnesium bromide? Hmm, hmm. Magnesium bromide is an ionic compound composed of Mg2 plus ion and Br minus ions. Um, to balance the charges, the proportion must be 1 Mg2 plus ion and 2 Br minus ions. So the formula is MgBr2. Correct. Ah. Uh, teacher, I didn't memorize the formula. Instead, since I know how to balance charges, I can determine the formula myself. Very good. Since you know how to balance simple compounds, let's try balancing complicated ionic compounds. Ionic compounds with polyatomic ions in it. Uh, what is a polyatomic ion? A polyatomic ion, also known as a molecular ion, is a charged chemical species composed of two or more covalently bonded atoms. Uh, what are some examples of such ions? Some common polyatomic ions include the phosphate ion with a minus 3 charge, the sulfate ion with a minus 2 charge, the carbonate ion with a minus 2 charge, the nitrate ion with a minus 1 charge, the ammonium ion with a plus 1 charge, the chromate ion with a minus 2 charge, the dichromate ion with a minus 2 charge, and permanganate ion with a minus 1 charge. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on there, teacher. You said previously that covalent bonds occur between nonmetal elements, right? Like hydrogen and oxygen forming a covalent bond resulting in H2O. That's right. But chromate ion and permanganate ion are compounds between metals and nonmetals. I thought that metals and nonmetals only form ionic bonds, right? It's true that metals and nonmetals form ionic bonds the vast majority of times. But both chromium and manganese are transition metals, and in exceptional situations, they can form covalent bonds with nonmetals. I see. Hmm, okay. Take note that the net charge is written in the superscript, but interestingly, it is common practice to write the magnitude before the sign. So, a doubly charged cation is indicated as 2 plus instead of plus 2. Okay, and must I memorize all those polyatomic ions? Of course. Would you like to balance some polyatomic ionic compounds to help you with that? Sure. Let me try. What is the formula of aluminium sulfate? Hmm. Aluminium ion has a plus 3 charge, while sulfate ion has a minus 2 charge. So, 
The formula of aluminium sulfate is Al2 SO4 3, right? Yes, and in the case of aluminium sulfate, there are both ionic and covalent bonds. Ah, I know. The ionic bond is between aluminium and sulfate ion, while the covalent bond is between the sulfate ion itself. Correct. Hmm. I think you're ready to work on a question now. Oh, I'm actually quite excited to see if I truly understand. 